This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain an action, adventure, drama, and sci-fi film called The Osiris Child. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Indy Somerville recalls her father's words to never trust someone who needs something from her. However, her father never met anyone who didn't need something from someone. Indy argues that this is why he never showed his hurt. He lost his purpose and ran away, so she traveled the universe to find him again. Lieutenant Kane Somerville once made a mistake on a mission that killed most of his crew. He was accused of negligence through substance abuse upon returning to Earth, but was pardoned due to his decorated career as a fighter pilot. However, this affected him and his family deeply. While riding with Kane on a colonized planet, Indy stresses that she only went there to see him. She asks if he misses Earth, but he claims to love the new planet. Indy shares that her mother thinks Kane is running away, so he defends that he's helping build a new world. Indy responds indifferently, so Kane takes her to a shooting range to appease her. Indy misses her shot, so Kane permits her to try again. He stresses that, afterward, they must check the safety bunkers, which are built to protect dignitaries during a crisis. Kane trains Indy to shoot accurately, allowing her to hit a bullseye. While leaving, Kane tells her she'll stay in the capital with the nanny, since he'll be in the flotilla, a floating military base. They pass by a prison, so Indy asks if the prisoners are paid to work. Kane claims they're paying their debt to society instead. During a thunderstorm, a distressed radio call warns that large creatures have breached the prison. Soon, the creatures run across a field in the darkness. The next day, Kane wakes up in Flotilla. While playing his messages, Kane ignores the ones from his friend and his ex-wife, but listens to Indies while checking reports. However, the message is interrupted because of a temporary communications blackout. Meanwhile, the colonel reports to General Linux that the creatures they created destroyed the outer cities. He asserts that it's their responsibility to save the people on the surface, but Linux is concerned about Exer's reputation. She assures him that the communications blackout will give them time to sort things before higher-ups hear about it. Kane attends a meeting where Linux announces that the prison was breached. The prisoners threaten to release a deadly virus in the capital, Osiris, if Exer intervenes or if they extract anyone from the surface. Afterward, Kane rushes to send a message to Indy, but he's blocked. He asks for incident reports from the capital and prison in the last week, but the information becomes classified. The colonel later arrives in Kane's room and, for friendship's sake, tells him the truth. He explains that Exor bred creatures called raggeds in prison to assimilate or kill indigenous species on the new planet. Contrary to Linux's claims, the raggeds escaped and are now heading towards Osiris. In 23 hours, Protocol 84 will be launched to destroy the Raggeds along with the colonies, despite Linux's claims that it's leverage against the prisoners. The Colonel tells him that the hangar will lock in 20 minutes to prevent anyone from leaving and reminds Kane that he's Indy's only hope. Kane escapes in a plane, but XR security shoots at him. As he deflects a heat-seeking missile using flares, another plane shoots at him. He intercepts with projectiles and maneuvers to destroy the plane, but he reaches a dangerous altitude. Kane faints but ejects himself and deploys a parachute in time. He lands on the water where a man knocks him out. Later, the man holds Kane at gunpoint and asks why he fell from the sky. Kane admits that he escaped, but claims the prisoners threatened to blow up the reactors. However, the man shows his ID, revealing that he's a prison nurse named Sai Lambrak. Sai knows the prison's empty, so he doesn't believe Kane. Kane argues they have 22 hours left before the planet's destroyed, so he asks for help. But Sai refuses without something in exchange. Desperate, Kane tells Sai that he needs to save his daughter in the capital. In exchange for his help, Kane offers Sai refuge in the bunker. In the past, prisoners were told their life ended after being sentenced and that they were useless to humanity. In the cafeteria, Sai, who is a prisoner, told his fellow inmates, Vim and Crete, that Carmel found a way out. Crete claimed Carmel's insane and that they can't access the tubing necessary to open a cell. However, Sai asserted that Carmel successfully did so undetected. But Carmel wasn't sure which cell opened because the cells looked similar. Sai explained they need to fill all the cells to ensure one of them was in the right one. Once that person is free, he'll trigger the emergency releases for all cells. However, the other group they recruited was undecided about their plans. Meanwhile, in the warden's office, Warden Mourdain questioned Carmel's fondness for solitary and religion. He claimed that prisoners prayed to cope with guilt, and despite him not believing in religion, he'll ensure the prison would be Carmel's personal hell. Carmel told him it wasn't his first time encountering someone like Mourdain. Mourdain retorted that the prison is unique, but Carmel interrupted him. Insulted, Mourdain beat Carmel and sent him to the lower cages. In the cafeteria, Sai convinced Crete that they'll never escape unless they act. He looked at Bostock on the other table, who signaled that this group was in, so Sai incited a fight. 
Meanwhile, Mordain reported to Linux via phone call that their experiments were going well. Impressed with the progress, Linux claims that they could deploy in months. Suddenly, Mordain was alerted about the cafeteria fight so he ended the call. One prisoner challenged Sai to fight one on one. While they fought, Mordain and the guards arrived, halting the chaos. Mordain approached Sai and told him to prove himself. He ordered the guards not to intervene unless the crowd interrupted. So the other prisoner quickly attacked Sai. The two exchanged blows until Sai was trapped in a headlock. Suddenly, Creed stabbed the opponent, causing a brawl with the guards. Afterward, the prisoners were sent to rotating solitary cells with flashing lights to induce deliriousness. As one person short-circuited the tubing, Mordain took Sai and Vim to be sedated. Presently, Kane asks Sai why a nurse is armed, but Sai reminds him that there's no time for chit-chat. Kane agrees they're too slow on foot and tells Sai of a contraband outpost beyond the mountain. Just then, fighter pilots pass and the two hide. Soon, the two reach a bar in the outpost. Kane asks the barkeeper who owns the bus outside, so she points to Jip and Bill, who are throwing knives at a target while getting high. The barkeeper stops Kane from approaching them, saying they'll kill him if he interrupts them. She hands them drinks instead. Kane asks Sai why he became a nurse. Sai responds that he likes helping people, but Kane tells him most people he's helped are bad. Kane concludes that Sai is a better man than him and then approaches the couple. Kane asks the couple for a ride to Osiris, but Jip kicks him and holds him at knife point. Jip berates him for treating them as a taxi service. Sai apologizes on Kane's behalf and offers Bill a drink to make peace. Bill commends Sai's good cop approach, then notices Kane's uniform. Kane negotiates to pay 10 grand for the ride, but Bill isn't interested in working with a military man. To persuade them, Sai shares that Kane is a defector who wants to return to his family before he's found. This piques Bill and Jip's interest, but they still refuse Kane's request for only 10 grand. Jip and Sai agree that Kane should pay 20 grand instead, so Kane concedes. Before leaving, however, Jip orders him to get high and hit the target. Kane whiffs the substance and hits the target, satisfying them. Sai asks where they can get guns, making Jip think that they'll get into a fight during the trip. Still, she suggests the dealers, Hopper and Mandel. In the past, a beaten up Vim woke up in the cage. As he tried to escape, a ragged appeared and struck him with its tongue, injecting something in him. Sai woke up from Vim's screams and found himself in another cage where Mordain watched him. Mordain mentioned that terraforming a planet required killing the indigenous species. He told Sai that he was to become a part of this process while Vim was already transforming. Raggeds were made by turning the inmates into creatures that could adapt, evolve, and survive harsh environments. Mordain encouraged Sai to make peace with the fact that he'll be one of them. Suddenly, the cell's floor opened, dropping Sai out of Mordain's sight. When the pod opened, Sai met Bostock, who rescued and gave him a nurse's ID. A manic Crete arrived to announce that he had let the creatures loose. As the ragged caused havoc in prison, the three escaped. Outside, Sai separated from them, telling them he was going to the opera. Meanwhile, Murdain was cornered by a ragged Carmel. He tried to reason with it, but was killed. Two years ago on planet Earth, a lawyer told Sai that he'd been painted as a monster for breaching the code and be made as an example. The lawyer regretted the terrible news, but Sai told him nothing mattered anymore. Presently, Kane, Sai, Jip, and Bill wait for Hopper and Mandel. The dealers bring out firearms but notice Kane's extra jacket and refuse to make a deal unless he pays 30 grand. Kane agrees and takes the firearms. Hopper and Mandel get drunk after the others leave. While fixing a gun, Hopper notices something outside, so he goes out to check but sees nothing. When he returns, raggeds come out of hiding, surrounding them. The two notice, so they prepare the firearms just before the beasts charge. They fire at will, but one ragged enters their house and mauls Mandel. As it thrashes inside, a bloody hopper unpins a grenade. On the bus, Jip and Bill learn about the creatures, and Exor's plan to destroy everything. Sai wonders how he ended up there, astray from his plans. Jip asks if Sai's talking about fate, but Sai claims he only believes in consequences and regrets coming to the planet. Jip and Bill laugh since they love the place because of the clean air, wide open spaces, and clean food. Bill throws the question to Kane, asking him if he likes the place. Kane says he liked it 24 hours ago since it was a fresh start and a chance to escape Earth. Jip asks him if his job pays well. Kane says it does, but it costs him his marriage, a permanent shoulder injury, and not knowing his daughter well. Jip tells them their parents kicked them out, so they turn to this kind of life. Sai and Kane realize the couple are actually step siblings. Jip asks what Kane's job is, so he tells her that he oversees the growth of cities, the capital, mines, and prison. Sai corrects him that the prisons are slave labor camps. Kane argues that forced labor allowed for the rapid growth of frontiers. Sai deflects this, saying the prisoners he saw were inhumanely overworked. 
Kane argues that at least they were useful, and that prison is hard because it's punishment after all. Annoyed, Sai questions Kane about becoming a fugitive despite his black and white views on crime. So Kane asks if Sai is a family. Sai turns his head in silence, so Kane assumes he wouldn't understand. Bill interrupts and asks what'll happen if Indy isn't an Osiris. So Kane promises to give them refuge in the bunker even without Indy. Upon reaching the city, they see chaos as officers fight off the ragids. Bill and Jip protect the bus while Sai and Kane head to his apartment. Sai reminds Kane if his daughter is gone, they'll return to the bus immediately. Kane and Sai enter the building where Kane almost gets shot by his old neighbor. He asks him if he saw Indy, but he didn't. Back outside, an officer shoots a missile launcher, causing an explosion that injures Bill. Kane enters his apartment to find a burnt corpse. He freezes, fearing the worst. Suddenly, Indy calls out to him from the closet. He goes to embrace her, relieved that she's alive. They encounter Ragged on their way downstairs, so they head up instead. In the bus, Bill bleeds out while Jib searches for their medical supplies. Suddenly, Bill grabs her, so Jib struggles from his grasp, still hoping to fight for his life. However, Bill accepts his fate, so he holds her face close to his as he succumbs to his wounds. Kane, Sai, and Indy reach the rooftop as the ragged approaches the door. Indy points to the bus below, so Sai lifts her and jumps despite Kane's protests. Seeing that they landed on the roof, Kane follows suit. He lands and hangs onto the roof's edge, so Sai pulls him up. Sai bangs on the hatch, demanding Bill and Jib to open it. A distraught Jib hesitates but eventually lets them in. Inside, they see Bill dead while an emotional Jib drives the bus. As they exit the city, Sai covers Bill's body with a blanket. Later, Kane explains the situation to Indy, ensuring that she understands. He apologizes for being a bad father and being absent from her life. In tears, Indy forgives him. Kane tells Jip to head for an abandoned mineshaft where the bunker is. He then makes them all memorize the code to open the bunker door, just in case. In the flotilla, Linux learns that a bus is heading to the bunker. She sends a plane to inspect it, so instead of turning right to the bunker's direction, Kane asks Jip to drive straight to misdirect the plane. When the plane leaves, Jip makes a quick turn and speeds towards the bunker. Suddenly, the plane intercepts them and riddles the vehicle with bullets. Sai takes cover while Jip is killed. After the plane leaves, Sai and Indy get up and see Kane dead. Sai carries a protesting Indy and sprints for the bunker. They reach the mineshaft but find the raggeds are already there. A ragged chases them as they rush for the bunker. When they're about to reach the door, the ragged attacks Sai, injecting him. He shoots the creature dead and then helps Indy unlock the door and hatch to the bunker. They reach inside just in time before Exer decimates the surface. Sai begins to turn and asks Indy for a sharp object. She finds him scissors but realizes that Sai is planning to kill himself. She pleads Sai not to leave her alone, stressing that he's the only one she has. As Sai transforms, he screams. In the past, Sai hung out with a patient who asked him how the opera went. Sai disliked it, however, his wife and daughter loved it, so he didn't mind. The patient advised him to spend time with them while he could. When Sai returned to his hospital shift, a woman and a drunk driver were received after a collision that killed the woman's daughter. Sai assisted the dying woman but froze up upon realizing that she was his wife. Sai tearfully encouraged her to stay awake while his colleagues advised him to leave the room. They assumed he'd do everything to save her, so Sai kissed her and assured her he loved her as another nurse assisted him outside. Shortly after, he watched as more staff were called in as his wife's condition worsened. Sai remembered that the report said the woman's daughter was killed, so he asks his colleague if his daughter was dead. His colleague could only tearfully apologize before leaving to find someone to help him. Finally, he heard his wife flatlining. As the nurses desperately tried to revive her, Sai wept in anguish. Suddenly, his anguish turned into rage. He went to the drunk driver and showed him a photo of his family. When the man didn't show remorse, Sai proceeded to beat and choke him until a guard tased him from behind. Indy recalls her father's words to never trust someone who needs something from her. However, she recalls he's never met anyone who didn't need something from someone. Indy argues that people become who they are when necessary. A year after the raggeds were unleashed, a man and woman in suits arrive in a cave and see a manually activated beacon, concluding that someone's present. They see Indy from afar, but a ragged suddenly impales the man from behind and hits the woman. She struggles to escape, but the ragged pins her. Indy casually looks at the dying man and then approaches the woman to ask her where the flotilla went. The woman tells her it's heading to Earth after it's recalled when the disaster happened. Indy learns from her that Exer claimed the prisoners caused the explosion that killed everyone. Indy asks her if she wants to die there. As the ragged looms over the woman, she frantically answers no, so Indy orders her to take them to flotilla undetected, otherwise she'll be killed. In the ship, Indy speaks to the ragged in sign language, then holds hands with it. Upon takeoff, Indy tells Sai that they're going home and says goodbye to her father. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. 
turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out thank you for watching